Welcome back, everyone, to Halloween Haunts, 365.com, the podcast. I'm Jared. Hi, I'm Terry. I didn't change that yet. I see that. Yeah, I'm working on making it a movie. Oh, that'd be pretty cool. It will be. We'll see if I can pull it off. Anyway, we have a special, kind of special for the area special today. We're going to go over the history of Eastern State Penitentiary, which is now home to Halloween Horror, not Halloween Horror Nights, Halloween Nights at Eastern State Pen, which we can see right here. They really went purple with this theme, but, I mean, they've had a successful season, so we'll see. All right, let me move my phone out of the way so we don't get any of that weird static going on. How you doing, Zach? I'm okay. How are you? Talking to Mike. How are you? There you go. <laughs> don't look at me. Look, You're an ass. look at me over here. I mean, they can't hear you when you do that. <clears throat> It's all right. It's only our 90th show. I know. <laughs> I need a nap. Uh, you need a nap. Yeah, we were hanging out at a garage sale with friends of ours today. Horror 365. Find them on podcast. And we got the new polo on today. Look, they didn't screw up the letters. No, I like that better so than the I. white. Yeah, the white looks stupid. All right. So today we are going to talk about Eastern State, a little bit of the history some famous people that went there and why it's kind of a big deal before we do that we're gonna pimp our shit check out this halloween store it's got logo wear from us it's got halloween shirts working on some more shirts but for right now check it out So, just click the link in the description. The link's also in the podcast form, and it works. I tested that out. Good. Good. So, you ready to get on to this? Yes. This is the history of Eastern State Penitentiary. Let's do it. The Eastern State Penitentiary, also known as ESP, is a former American prison in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. It is located at 2027 Fairmont Avenue between Corinthian Avenue and North 22nd Street in the Fairmount section of the city. It was operational from 1829 until 1971. The penitentiary refined the revolutionary system of separate incarceration first pioneered at Walnut Street Jail, which emphasized principles of reform rather than punishment. It didn't really work out. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> I mean, it kind of did, because we still go for reform instead of... I don't know if it works. Nobody knows if it <laughs> works. Notorious criminals such as Al Capone and bank robber Willie Sutton were held inside the innovative wagon wheel design. James Bruno, Big Joe, and several male relatives were incarcerated here between 1936 and 1948, for the alleged murders in the Calares Massacre of 1934, before they were paroled. At its completion, the building was the largest and most expensive public structure ever erected in the United States, and quickly became a model for more than 300 prisons worldwide. I didn't know that. The prison is currently a U.S. historic uh, landmark, not trademark, <laughs> which is open to the public as a museum for tours seven days a week, 12 months out of the year. They sometimes close for holidays, though, but they're open 10 a.m. to 5, and all the proceeds go back to keeping the building upright. I've done the day tour there. It's pretty cool. Very cool. So now we're going to take a look at the picture. This is Eastern State from the side. You can see a little sign there, a little history sign. And then we have another angle right here. Very gothic type of I was thing. just going to say that. It does look like a castle. Yep. Now, we also have a bird eye view. That's a dope picture. Not our picture, but we borrowed it. But, I mean, look at that. That is huge. It's a whole city block. Yes. Actually, four of these city blocks. One. No, nah, it's a full city block. That is huge. It is. I've never seen that I've sky picture before. I've never seen. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I've never seen that 
I'm not sure what year this was taken. Those cars don't look too old, so I don't think it was that long ago. But yeah, it's it's an impressive picture. Sorry for you guys on the podcast. I guess you just have to check out the YouTube channel. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> at youtube.com slash Halloween Home 365. Subscribe, like, do all that jazz. We're at 138 subscribers as of recording. Very so we had a good. nice little jump. My goal is 200 before haunt season. Because we're going to see a jump come haunt season, as we always do. But I want to see if the off-season stuff's working. Only one way to find out. Like and subscribe. Yes. You can subscribe on this button. Oh, I hit her shit. <laughs> right here. All right. Moving on. Designed by John Havilland and opened on October 25th, 1829... Eastern State is considered to be the world's first true penitentiary. Eastern State's revolutionary system of, incarcer of incarceration, dubbed the Pennsylvanian system, or separate system, encouraged separate confinement as a form of rehabilitation. The warden was legally required to visit every inmate every day, and the overseers were mandated to see each inmate three times a day. I wonder how long that lasted. I was just going to say that. The Pennsylvania system was opposed by the Auburn system, also known as the New York system, which held that prisoners should be forced to work together in silence and could be sub subjected to physical punishment. Sing Sing Prison was an example of the Auburn system. Although the Auburn system was favored in the United States, Eastern State Penn's Radio floor plan and system of solitary confinement was the model for over 300 prisons worldwide. Critic and activist John Neal in 1841 expressed rev revulsion at the international reputation of a nation that broke away from all its bands and fetters only 50 or 60 years ago, overthrowing prisons, palaces, and thrones in her march towards universal emancipation already renowned throughout the whole earth for her prisons, her manacles, and her badges of servitude. Okay. Why are they saying her? Oh, the country. The country. Yeah. Originally, inmates were housed in cells that could only be accessed by entering through a small exercise yard attached to the back of the prison. Only a small portal, just large enough to pass meals, opened onto the cell blocks. This design proved impractical, and in the middle of constructions, cells were constructed that allowed prisoners to enter and leave the cell blocks through metal doors that were covered by a heavy wooden door to filter out noise. The halls were designed to have a feel of a church. I don't have, I didn't want to steal everyone's picture, but the halls do look like a church with like a steeple. Like when you're looking down it, it has that Right, arc. yes, I've seen that picture before. Some believe that the doors were so small, were small, so prisoners would have a harder time getting out, minimizing an attack on an officer. Others have explained the small doors forced the prisoners to bow while entering the cell. The design is related to penance and ties to the religious inspiration of the prison. The cells were made of concrete with a single glass skylight representing the eye of God, suggesting to the prisoners that God was always watching them. Outside the cell was an individual area for exercise, enclosed by high walls so prisoners could not communicate. Exercise time for each prisoner was synchronized so no two prisoners next to each other would be allowed out at the same time. Prisoners were allowed to garden and even keep pets in their exercise yards. When a prisoner left his cell, an accompanying guard would wrap a hood over his head to prevent him being recognized by the other prisoners. Huh. Cell accommodations were advanced for their time, especially Al Capone's, including a faucet with running water over a flush toilet, as well as curved pipes along part of one wall which served as a central heating during the winter months where hot water would be run through the pipes to keep the cells reasonably heated. Toilets were remotely flushed twice a week by the guards of the cell block, so even if they wanted to, like, strike and have shit pile up, they could flush from outside. It's not bad for the 1800s. One of the two-story cell blocks in the Eastern City... Wow. <coughs> the original design of the building was for seven one-story cell blocks, 
But by the time Cell Block 3 was completed, the prison was already over capacity. What a surprise. <laughs> All cell blocks had two floors. Toward the end, cell blocks 14 and 15 were hastily built due to overcrowding. They were built and designed by prisoners. Cell Block 15 was for the worst behaved prisoners, and the guards were gated off from there entirely. Wow. So they just ran amok in Cell 15. Exactly. Inmates were punished with the individual treatment system. At this time, this form of punishment was thought to be most effective. They would be separated from others. In 1924, Pennsylvania Governor Gifford Pinchot allegedly sentenced Pep, the cat murdering dog, an actual dog, to a life sentence at Eastern State. Pep allegedly murdered the governor's wife's cherished cat. Prisoner records reflect that Pep was assigned an inmate number number C2559, which is seen in his mugshot. However, the reason for Pep's incarceration remains a subject of some debate. A contemporary newspaper article reported that the governor donated his own dog to the prison to increase inmate morale. Ah, it's a weird story. It is very strange. On April 3rd, 1945, a major escape was carried out by 12 inmates, including the infamous Willie Sutton, who over the course of a year managed to dig an undiscovered 97-foot tunnel under the prison wall. During renovations in the 1930s, an additional 30 incomplete inmate dug tunnels were discovered. <laughs> wow. It was designated a National Historic Landmark in 1965. The prison was closed in 1971. Many prisoners and guards were transferred to Greaterford Prison, about 31 miles northwest of Eastern State. The city of Philadelphia purchased the property with the intention of redeveloping it. The site had several proposals, including a mall and a luxury apartment complex surrounded by the old prison walls. That would be weird. That would be very strange. During the abandoned era, from closing until the late 1980s, a forest grew in the cell blocks and outside within the walls. The prison, the prison also became the home to many stray cats. In 1988, the Eastern State Penitentiary Task Force successfully petitioned Mayor Wilson Good to halt a redevelopment. In 1994, Eastern State opened to the public for history tours. The solitary confinement system eventually collapsed due to overcrowding problems. By 1913, Eastern State officially abandoned the solitary system and operated it as a conjugate prison until it closed in 1970. Eastern State was briefly used to house city inmates in 1971 after a riot at Holmesburg Prison. Wow. Hold on. The prison was one of the largest public works projects of the early republic and was a tourist destination in the 19th century. Notable visitors included Charles Dickens and Alex Tocqueville. And later notable inmates included Willie Sutton and Al Capone in 1929. Visitors spoke with prisoners in the cells, proving that inmates were not isolated, though the prisoners themselves were not allowed to have visits with family or friends during their stay. Most of the early prisoners were petty criminals incarcerated for various robbery and theft charges. Muggers, pickpockets, purse snatchers, burglars, etc., and the first-time offenders often served two years. The penitentiary was intended not simply to punish, but to move the criminal towards spiritual reflection and change. Hail Mary. While some have argued that the Pennsylvania system was Quaker-inspired, there is little <laughs> evidence to support this. The organization that promoted Eastern State's creation, the Society for Alleviating the Miseries of Public Prisons, today it's called Pennsylvania Prison Society, was then was less than half Quaker and was led for nearly 50 years by Philadelphia's and Ang Ang these Catholic words every time. That's not even a word. And Anglican Bishop, Bishop William White. Proponents of the systems believe strongly that the criminals exposed in silence 
Criminals exposed in silence to thoughts of their behavior and the ugliness of their crimes would become ge genuinely penitent. I guess that they would repent. I don't know. Mm -hmm. The reality, the guards and counselors of the facility designed a variety of physical and psychological torture regimens for various infractions, including dousing prisoners and freezing water outside during winter months. Oh, I'd love that. Mm, Chaining... Not me. <laughs> Chaining their tongues to their wrists in a fashion as such that struggling against the chains could cause their tongue to tear. Ouch. Strapping prisoners into chairs with tight leather restraints for days on end. And putting the worst behaved prisoners into a pit called the Hole, an underground cell block dug under cell block 14, where they would have no light, no human contact, and little food for as long as two weeks. Ah, this is more about the reform and rehabilitation. SCI Gratiford opened in the 1920s after disturbances occurred at Eastern State. The Pennsylvania Prison Board opened Gratiford to assume functions previously held by Eastern State. Prior to its closing in late 1969, Eastern State Penn, then known as State Correctional Institution Philadelphia, had established a far-reaching program of group therapy with the goal of having all inmates involved. From 1967, when the plan was initiated, the program appears to have been moderately successful as many inmates were involved in the group, which was voluntary. An interesting aspect was that the groups were led by two therapists, one from the psych or social work staff and the second from the prison officer staff. Wow. So this just goes into a bunch of different architectural stuff. So... Eastern State Penitentiary's radial plan served as the model for hundreds of prisons later on. So they mean with this thing. So right there, I guess that would kind of would be easier to police because you can come around this exit out here. You reach that. Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense, the pinwheel. All right. Oh, I'm working on a beard, too. We're getting there. <laughs> we should go for a day tour. Eh, we'll go this Halloween. When it gets cooler out. Mm -hmm. A daytime tour. When the Eastern State Penitentiary, or Cherry Hill, as it was known at the time, was erected in 1829 in Francisville. The idea of this new prison was created in a meeting held at Benjamin Franklin's house in 1787. It was the largest and most expensive public building in the country. Its architect architectural significance first rose in 1821 when British architect John Haviland was chosen to design the building. Haviland found most of his inspiration for his plan for the penitentiary from prisons and asylums built in the 1780s. In England and Ireland, he gave the prison a neo gothic look to instill fear into those who thought of committing a crime. So it's a guy yeah. style building. There's a reason behind the madness. Yes. So this is all just repeat stuff right here. My God. All right. So that that pretty much brings us to modern day. Mm -hmm. Eastern State Penitentiary operates as a museum and a historical site, open year round. Guided tours as well as self-guided audio tours. Narrated mainly by Steve Buscemi, with former guards, wardens, and prisoners also contributing. A scavenger hunt is also available for the children. So they have the daytime tours that you can visit any time. Visitors are allowed to walk into several specifically marked solitary confinement cells, but most of them remain off-limits and filled with original rubble and debris from years of neglect. The city skyline of Philadelphia is visible from the prison courtyard, which still has the original baseball backstop and a chain link fence atop the outfield wall, the outer prison wall to attempt to keep home run balls inside the grounds. That'd be pretty cool. To see that. Yeah, I um I do remember that. And you were only allowed like so many cells, but you do see Al Capone's cell. Very cool. In addition, Eastern State holds many special events throughout the year. Each July, there is a Bastille Day celebration, complete with a comedic re 
reprising of Storming of the Bastille and then tossing a thousand of, of tasty cakes from the towers. <laughs> I've never heard of that. Accompanied by a cry of Let Them Eat Tasty Cake from an actor portraying Marie Antoinette. This Philadelphia tradition sadly ended in 2018. Oh. We need to bring that back. I'm going to go get some tasty cakes. Little Debras. <laughs> The museum attracts close to 220,000 no. yeah. wow. 220, visitors each year. Yeah. That, that's a lot. I think it's more than that, though. Well, maybe when... Because the... Haunt Season alone would have brought that at Terror Behind the Walls. And that's only three months. It's more than that. Oh, this is just the museum it's saying. Just the museum. Okay. Religious morals in the prison. <laughs> Man, Sorry. Why are you coughing so much I today? It's my allergies. I didn't take a pill. It's usually me. I'm usually dying or hiccuping or coughing. Right now, I've been doing pretty good. My allergies are like kicking my butt today. All right. So, religious murals in the prison chaplain's office, painted in 1955 by inmate Lester Smith, remain visible, visible to guests despite damage from exposure to sunlight. The tour ends with an exhibit titled Prisons Today, Questions in the Age of Mass Incarceration, which informs guests about the U.S. prison system today and its failings. They're, they're, when they did the, I don't know if it's still there for Halloween nights at Eastern State, but when they did Temper, Temper, Terror Behind the Walls, they had a fake gargoyles on the exterior of the Empire. Yes, yeah. they did. All right. Due to its ominous appearance, gloomy atmosphere, and a long history, Eastern State has been used as a location for television programs and filmings about hauntings. Paranormal TV shows like Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, BuzzFeed Unsolved, and MTV's Fear explored the paranormal at Eastern State. Eastern State was also used in an episode of Cold Case titled The House, which dealt with a murder after an inmate escape. For the show, the prison was renamed Northern State Penitentiary. On June 1, 2007, Most Haunted Live conducted a, and broadcasted a paranormal investigation live for the first time in the United States from Eastern State Penitentiary for seven hours hoping to come in contact with supernatural beings. Hmm. In the PlayStation 2 game The Suffering, players can find a video documentary of Eastern State Penitentiary, one of the inspirations for the game. At least two music videos have been filmed at Eastern State. On July 29th, 1985, Tina Turner filmed her One of the Living video in the abandoned prison. Philadelphia punk band The Dead Milkman's breakout hit Punk Rock Girl included footage of the band in the prison as well as driving through the Fairmont neighborhood. Eastern State has also served as a location in several feature films. Terry Gilliam's 1995 film 12 Monkeys used it as the setting for a mental hospital. The 1998 film Return to Paradise used it as a substitute for a prison in Malaysia. The 2000 film Animal Factory, directed by Steve Buscemi, relied heavily on Eastern State in its portrayal of a prison in a state of advanced decay. In June 2008, Paramount Pictures used part of Eastern State Penitentiary for the filming of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. In September 2008, the History Press released Eastern State Penitentiary, a history, the only comprehensive history book currently in print about Eastern State. It was written by Paul Cahan, a historian and former tour guide. With the assistance of the site's educational director, the book is a four were written by the penitentiary's former social worker. In 2012, the soundtrack to the film Alpha Girls was recorded in Eastern State by the band Southwark. So, when we come across these buildings, is it haunted? There is yeah. some evidence to this, and I have... I have about 30 fun facts from thoughtcatalog.com. We're not going to list all 30 because we covered some of them already, but there have been several accounts of hearing someone crying in extreme pain as if they're being tortured. 
Observers claim they've seen sudden orbs or streaks of light appearing, the sudden disappearing. Many say they've heard the disembodied sounds of someone walking through the prison's halls. Visitors have often alleged they've heard someone calling them by their name and then vanishing. Others distinctly <laughs> distinct. the mm -hmm. others distinctly recall feeling someone tapping them on the shoulder, but then they turn around, no one's there. Many have reported hearing loud, sadistic laughter. On the third floor of one cell block, numerous visitor visitors say they've heard the sound of cell doors suddenly opening and then slamming shut. Many say they've heard the sounds of cell door hands jingling. Oh, that's pretty the creepy. Handle jingling. Many workers at the penitentiary have allegedly quit with no notice, running in fear from some strange, sinister voice. There have been multiple reports of people hearing the sound of furniture being dragged across the floors. Others have heard stories, have heard stones or other large objects rolling on the roof. Well, I mean, it's an old-ass building. There have been several accounts of people hearing the sounds of babies screaming inside cell block 7. Why babies? Who knows? Many people claim to have fallen sick while visiting the penitentiary. Hundreds of people say they have seen ghosts inside Eastern State. Numerous visitors claim to have seen something resembling a shimmering blob that suddenly appears and then fades just as suddenly. Others say they've seen a guard tower materialize at night, helmed by a mysterious figure. Now you're seeing buildings? What else? What LSD did you take before walking in? <laughs> right? While the prison was operating, there were over 50 suicides and a dozen murders within its walls. The most notorious story was Chicago gangster from the outfit, Al Capone, stayed at Eastern State in 1929. As the rumor goes, the haunted prison saw him transformed into a weeping and terrified mess who would send out blood-curdling screams at night, shouting for Jimmy to leave him alone. People say this could have been the disease that Al Capone did contract early in life and never looked at syphilis. Yeah. And I'm sure he killed someone named Jimmy in Chicago at some point. Everyone's named Jim down there. Uh, former East Eastern State locksmith Gary Johnson, who calls the penitentiary a giant haunted house, says that one day when he was assigned to remove a lock in cell block four, I had this feeling that I was being watched real intensely. I turned and I'm looking down the block and I know there's nobody there. A couple of seconds later and I get the same feeling. I'm really being watched. I turn around and I look down the block and I don't see anything. And as I start to turn down the block, this black shadow just leapt across the block. Black shadows. Johnson also claimed that he saw the faces of tortured souls suddenly appear on the cell walls. After British novelist Charles Dickens visited the penitentiary in 1842, he wrote, I am persuaded that those who designed this system do not know what it is they are doing. <laughs> I hold the slow and daily tampering with the mysteries of the brain to be immeasurably worse than any torture of the body. Wow. So we read the cat one. The prison stone facade is 20 inches thick. Jesus. I figured it would be thicker. That's not really that thick. Well, yeah, because you can, like, they could tri chisel through that. That's only three feet. That's less than three feet. Yeah. But, I mean, it's also stone, so. They'd be picking at it yeah. a long time. So, we went over that and that and that. All right. So, now, Eastern State today, before last season, was Terror Behind the Walls. Yep. I took that picture. Yes, you did. I <laughs> missed this event. This event was eight attractions wide. It was a little difficult to get to because you had to be bussed. But then they changed everything. And they went to Halloween Nights at Eastern State Penitentiary. Now, I'm not going to go on about that because I wasn't there. I didn't see it. I heard it was fun. I heard all good things about it. Right. 
but we went from eight haunts to two. Right. I go for haunts not to have a cute little beer at Al Capone's cell. <laughs> I, well, I think it's more for the college students. And it could be. I heard you attendance know. was great. A lot of the pictures were kind of empty. But I heard they sold that every night. So I don't, like I said, we'll have to go this year. We'll check it out. I'm going to reach out to them and see if they have any tours or anything open. See if they want to be on the podcast, too. Yes. I don't know if the same woman works there. I'll have to look. We'll see. That'd be fun. It would be fun. It'd be fun. It would be fun. We got a lot coming I up mean, in the haunt season. We do have to go just one time. Do we? Yeah, we do. Okay. I mean, you gotta go to the zoo. They bus you over. It's kind of a pain, but, I mean... You might get lucky and be able to park out front. You can't really try, because you can't go there. You gotta take 76 to the zoo. When I went, I parked out front. Okay, that's special. On the side of the building there. So, how's your possession going for the fans? I guess it's going well. We'll see. I don't know. You seem kind of like been a little normal if that's what you call normal i guess i guess well guys that was eastern state penitentiary i'm not gonna drag this on too long i'm gonna play our uh t-shirt video again just to see Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for listening on the podcast. Like I said, youtube.com slash Halloween Haunts 365. Like and subscribe. If you're watching this, you can find our podcast on Anchor. Guess what? It's Halloween Haunts 365. <laughs> I mean, you can't miss it. Can't no. Miss it. All right. So we have an interview coming up with the Fall Ritual. He's another uh, haunt enthusiast. And, uh, content creator we have house of a thousand corpses review yes kind of kylie led me to that we had fun we gotta do the devil's rejects review too i gotta work on that we did yes, that one too we did that one too well we got some things in the hopper coming down we may do a titanic special so tell us what you think about that in the comments i mean it doesn't really relate to the website but 1523 people did die so it's kind of haunted. Maybe we'll look into it. What do you think? I think so. I think so too. I like the Titanic. Also, you guys let me know what you think. I'm thinking about it doing a JFK Truth episode. Oh boy. Because it does say unexplained on our website. And that's one of the biggest unexplained. I have my theories. I'm sure Terry has her theories. And I think it'd be cool to just talk about it and list all the theories. We don't have to go all through JFK. We know what the fuck happened. So maybe we can just talk about the different theories out there. I was just going to say, more lean more towards the theories. Yes. Instead of the history. Yes. We'll do the shooting history and then go into theories. So tell us what you guys think about that. I think that'd be a lot of fun. I do too. Add something a little different. We're counting down the haunt season. It's June soon, so I only have a couple more months left. We kick off September 10th. Actually, almost three months. Yes. Almost three months. Told you it'd be here before you knew it. No, I'm dying over here. <laughs> I just want to hit the road, Jack. We got the tuna on call for the kids. Yes. He watches these. So hi, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> what? He does. I know he does. He gives us good input, too. I love hearing from him. He does. We he have does. possibly a Burlington County prison episode. I'm kind of finding not a lot of info on that. Mm. So that may end up a short splat. It's registered as haunted through the it government. It is? Yeah. 
It's one of the oldest buildings in Burlington County. And they hung people outside. And the pictures I saw show the rope still out there. Really? Yes. What we'll the see. heck? We'll check it out. We have Do an they interview. have tours? Huh? Do they have day yeah. tours? Yeah. But I want a night picture of the lasso. It'd be good for my video backgrounds. I can't. Yeah. I... It's just odd that they have that hanging up still. But if they do tours, I mean, hey. Yeah, we can go play with it. Um, <laughs> Playing myself. <laughs> you'll find a way. We have a Horror 365 interview coming up whenever we can put those guys together. Well, that's going to be a minute. He can hop on that iPad for a couple minutes. Uh, a Ted Bundy episode that I'm still working on because I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I might make it a two-parter. I may make a most video. I'm going to get some conversations, audio. I kind of want to make it a more in-depth feature. Because our John Wayne Gacy was a little boring. Yeah. I like Tim. I mean, Ted Bundy's better. I do. Okay. All right, well, that's what we got in the hopper coming. Not to mention the haunt season coming. More t-shirt design coming. We have a crazy haunt barbecue coming where I'm hoping we get a lot of people. We'll be recording in-house. We'll be recording on the Zoom for those who can't make it. It's going to be a nice four-part haunt season opening special. It's going to be fun. Because that guess what? The reason I'm doing it on that day. Because then there's only four more Fridays till haunt season. Yes. So that four-part special brings us right to September 10th and the Field of Screams review. We kick it off with Field of Screams. Always. That's how we do. Well, this year we might be kicking it off with HH Ed. Oh, that's right. They open up early. Yeah, we'll see if we're going. Uh, right now, the first maze, if you guys have not seen, is a mix between, I think it was The Mummy, Dracula, and Wolfenstein. Or Wolfenstein. Yeah. <laughs> Wolfenstein 3D, the old PC shooter. The Wolfman. The Wolfman. But it looked cool having those combined. So if the houses keep looking like that, Maybe using some points if they build up by then. We'll see. Because we can get out there in three days. Yeah. Leave Friday, go Saturday, Sunday, get home Monday early. We'll just miss Monday. I got a day of PTO we can use. I have tons. Oh, we got to save a week for October because we're working on... I don't know. Working on getting the haunted overload. We shall see. I mean... Hey, Hans, can you put your schedules out? Because I need to see what's going on so I can send my boss the requests. And then we'll go from there. Haunted Overload schedule is up. It's been up since four months from now. And there was another one up too, but I don't remember. They should be releasing them soon. They just wanted to get through uh, halfway to Halloween. Yeah, but the ones that didn't do any off-seasons are not doing anything. I don't know. It doesn't matter. But, in case you forgot, we went over the history of Eastern State Penitentiary. We're going to wrap this up. This has been Halloween Haunts, 365.com, the podcast, where every day is haunt season. Goodbye. Bye.